I'm Sarah Jensen, editor of OEM Off Highway, and welcome to Design and Engineering Insights. Today, I'll be speaking with George Rubin, Chief Commercial Officer at Loop Energy, about the company's fuel cell technology and a uh, collaboration it's doing with uh, Morello and its heavy duty electric tractors. So thank you for joining me today, George. Hi, Sarah. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, maybe just to start the conversation, if you could provide an overview of Loop Energy's eFlow fuel cell technology, kind of how it works and what benefits it offers. Sure. So at Loop, we design and build hydrogen fuel cells. Um, they're what is called PAM hydrogen fuel cells. Um, it's a it, it's a sort of a specific you know subsegment of the types of fuel cells that are typically used for you know, transportation and vehicle type type applications. Uh, what makes what makes Loop unique is how we design this this fuel cells and how we build them. And uh, we have the, the the very very specific approach called eFlow. Um, and what what it really does is is three things. One is from the from the the, the same size of the fuel cell we can get significantly more power than what is typically possible with a conventional design. So if you, if you, if you want to think sort of analogous to like an internal combustion engine, I mean, obviously there's not the same things, but more just, just, just a, in, 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 as an analogy, it will be the same as having the same size of an engine block, if you like, but you're able to get more power from that, that engine block, right? The second thing that it does is it allows us to generate this power very uniformly throughout the fuel cell. And so once again, if you if you like think of a, like if you have your you know four cylinders or six, right, you would have a very uniform distribution of this power generation across the whole unit, as opposed to making more in one part and less in the other, right? And while the having more power is almost obvious from a benefit point of view, it's you know you can you have better hill climbing power, you can pull a heavier load, better acceleration. The uniformity becomes very important when we start talking about things like long-term durability and reliability of the unit, right? The third piece is we can generate this power while consuming less fuel, right? So that goes back to Ultimately, what does it cost you to operate a vehicle like this? And the better is your mileage, the better your fuel efficiency. Ultimately, the better is the economics of you know, operating the, the vehicle. So these are the three things that, that make us quite different from the rest of the folks that are making fuel cells in, in the industry. And so how will this technology be adapted for use in Morello's heavy-duty electric tractors? Will there need to be any special design considerations or changes to the initial technology to fit the application? Or maybe can you talk a little bit about how it will be utilized in that application too? Right, right. The fuel cell itself is is one is a very important piece of this fuel cell system, but it's just one component. Once again, you can almost think of it as like an engine that, that sort of powers things. But there's a lot of other components that need to come together uh, to make it work within a vehicle. And so in case of Morello, and this is very true for almost every other customer, the fuel cell itself is typically the same. I mean, we have a variety of different products and they gear towards specific applications. But the fuel cell that we would use in this application would be similar to you know, other customers with similar vehicles. Where the custom piece of it comes in is in integration with the overall vehicle that Morello has. And then the, you know, the, the design and the configuration of other subsystems from you know, hydrogen fuel storage to the, you know, the exact cooling system configuration and so on. This is a very important element because the, generally speaking, the value proposition behind hydrogen is fairly easy to understand. It, you know, being able to replace diesel with something that eliminates the emissions yet doesn't inhibit the vehicle functionality is quite attractive. What can be challenging for a lot of the OEMs is, well, how do I start? 
there's so many new pieces that need to come together. So um, at Loop, we have the concept of total customer care, uh, which, which really has to do with making it as easy as possible for VM customers to adopt this, this new technology. And yes, we bring the fuel cell, but we also help them access the full ecosystem of partners from people that can help on the integration with the battery system side of things, to hydrogen tanks, to the cooling systems, to power electronics, so that they can they can access the best expertise they can and make this transition as painless as, as possible. What are some of the benefits of using fuel cells in this um, Borello vehicle application or even just any heavy duty vehicle application in general? Sure, sure. So the, 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 the primary benefit of introducing hydrogen fuel cells into what is otherwise already an electric vehicle is ultimately making it functionally as close to what the diesel powertrain can provide as possible, right? And that typically has to do with things like being able to have the same or similar payload that the vehicle can move, uh, being able to drive over longer range of, of distances, right? And when you have to refuel, to reduce that refuel in time to a matter of minutes as opposed to as, a, as opposed to hours. So in case of Morello, the types of benefits that are at the very forefront is being able to offer customers a zero emission solution yet uh, long uninterrupted periods of, of operation and very quick refueling times uh, when, they, when they do need to refuel their vehicle. So ultimately they get more uptime, uh, more operating hours, you know, less downtime, uh, better cost, and the ultimate objective they're shooting for, which is you know, eliminate the emissions, but not lose the, the capabilities that they otherwise need to do their job. So maybe what are some of the challenges associated with developing hydrogen fuel cells for heavy equipment applications? I mean, how, are, how is Loop Energy going about trying to overcome those challenges? Right. So they, they think they, there's, there's really two big categories of challenges that face pretty much everyone in the, you know, in the hydrogen fuel cell space, right? So one of them has to do with the, the how easy or how complex it is to integrate a hydrogen fuel cell into a vehicle platform. And, and this is something that is much more of a uh, function of just the time and the maturity of the market as opposed to the technology itself. But the reality is today, most customers are doing it for the first time, right? They have never actually done it before. They, they understand the value, but they need to kind of go through that process, right? And this, 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 could, be, uh, this could be challenging from a technical point of view. Uh, they need to identify the right uh, parties in the supply chain to source the right components. So it could be challenging from the administrative and kind of logistics point of view. Um, it could also be challenging from the point of view of, well, you know, when we offer these vehicles to the, to, to the fleet operators, where would they get the fuel, right? Like, you know, hydrogen infrastructure is not quite as developed. So, so in overcoming this, we truly believe that it's very important to have this ecosystem of partners, right? That's why we, we would we would partner with companies that develop hydrogen infrastructure, build subsystems, provide integration services. We don't do this to sort of a, you know, pass them through a loop and sort of a make try to, you know, make make more money on this. We do it to facilitate an easy transition for our OEM customers and really take, you know, take some bricks out of out of their bag and, and make it easier for them. Right. Mm -hmm. The second side is they it comes down to the cost of ownership. Everyone wants to go zero emission. Nobody wants to lose functionality. And frankly, I do really don't want to pay more, right? And like, mm -hmm. I don't blame them for it. Right? <laughs> yeah. you know, why, why would you? Making hydrogen electric vehicle as low cost as possible from the total cost of ownership point of view is very important. This is where fuel efficiency becomes a very, very important factor. And this is why we're so focused on developing the products that can offer the best fuel efficiency on the market. So once again, our OEM customers can have something that 
provides the best value to the fleet operators that they're ultimately targeting. And so uh, are you guys working closely with Morello or other OEM customers to integrate the technology? Or maybe can you give a little bit of an insight into how you collaborate with an OEM customer for a project like this? Yeah, no, no, absolutely, right. So, so we we work very closely with the OEMs. Um, it is it is our job to provide them with the fuel cell uh, part of the solution. We also we also take it as as you know as our responsibility to help them identify the rest of the pieces of the puzzle that they you know they need to 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 implement it. Uh, we we don't we don't build vehicles. Uh, we don't want to build vehicles, I and mean, we we don't ever want to compete with our customers. Mm-hmm. We're here to help them not compete with them. Um, so, so our role really is to provide them with the best technical solution and, and support them sort of through the entire process from the, the initial integration to, uh, to really the after sales support and, and address any, any, any questions or, or, uh, or, or challenges that they may face as they scale up their, you know, their manufacturing of, of these types of vehicles. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And so how does Loop Energy foresee hydrogen fuel cell technology evolving in the coming years? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think, I, I think the, the industry is certainly developing very, very quickly, and, and we are at the early stage of it. Um, I think we'll see, we'll see lots, of, lots of different changes and developments. Mm-hmm. I mean, if I was... Uh, if I if I were to look at my crystal ball, <laughs> which, <laughs> which of course I don't have, but if I were to guess, I think two big trends will happen. I think we will see a growing emphasis on the on the fuel efficiency in particular. Um, I, I think this will be a very important part of the development in the, in the fuel cell world. I also see that we're gonna we're gonna we're, we're gonna experience an increasing amount of collaboration between fuel cell companies and uh, battery system companies, mm-hmm. uh, particular people that you know develop uh, uh, battery management systems and, and, and overall battery battery electric solutions for uh, for for vehicles. Mm-hmm. Um, the batteries and fuel cells are not in competition; they're complementary solutions to each other. Uh, and, and I think there's a lot of efficiencies and technical benefits to be gained through that collaboration. I honestly think we'll see a lot of this happening over the next few years. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me today and provide some insights. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me.